Let's say that there is a gener generational curse that is on her. Okay? And let's say that she leaves her father, father's eye, and she comes, gets married to me. Now she is under my covering. Okay? So the question is, when that transition happened, did she leave everything and follow me? or did she bring some of the blessings of her father with her so if blessings can transfer cannot curses also come along what makes you think that the curses are like okay okay she got married we we'll leave her alone if she is bringing the blessings of her inheritance let's say the father is supposed to give some inheritance and that inheritance is coming to her and she's bringing it to me so am i accepting the inheritance so along with that inheritance in the dna of inheritance what claims are on that inheritance what all came into the house with that with that one blessing so you can't stop that you can't stop whatever came she didn't you didn't just marry that person unless there is an exceptionally clear thing saying i don't want anything except for the clothes that you're wearing i don't want anything from your father's house leave your father's house and follow me that is what god told abraham right leave your father's household and follow me that means he's saying that i'm leave your father's idols leave your father's possessions everything that you will have from now on will be given to you from me so the claim of your father's house is no more on you that is something that rarely happens in a marriage prophet i have the, the scripture here genesis <laughs> chapter 12 uh. verse 1 it says now the lord had said unto Abram huh. get thee out of thy country and from thy so kindred number one country two from your family three and from thy father's house aha uh -huh. unto a land that i will show thee so literally they, he's saying leave every, your physical country leave your family ties you can't say my cousin my nephew the one guy who attached himself gave abram a lot of problem You follow what I said just one relationship was enough to bring the father's demons along. Okay? So this is how God God saw Abraham. He said Abraham, I'm about to bless you, but the way I'm going to do it is how you have to be cut off. The, the umbilical cord has to be cut off. Otherwise, from time to time there is an access. From time to time Yes, spirits have access. Things have access. So it is not practical for you to do that. Huh? It's not practical for a wife to say I'm leaving you guys. I don't talk to you anymore. I'm marrying my husband. It's it's not a practical thing. So there is always a lot of connections that is still left behind. So what do you then do? So let's say that this woman is carrying a curse. Now when she marries somebody, is she marrying somebody that is blessed? Or is she marrying somebody that is also has curse in his blood? So what happens is that curse that is in her now finds solace in the curse that is in his blood so now two curses come together and it becomes compounded you 
you following what i'm saying so there was not there was nothing on him that could cancel out her curse there was nothing no grace on him that could override the curse that was on her so now and the vice versa is true let's say this girl was very blessed hmm no issues no problems she 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 didn't have any headaches she comes into a guy who is a believer but has a lot of curses lot of limitations now what happens she's not just marrying him she's marrying into limitations now his limitations becomes her limitations one time prophetically there was a group of people that wanted to do business i remember telling this individual no problem go ahead you can do partnership with them but by putting together all that spirit of delays that is on each of these individuals your life it is going to be delayed by 15 years because you're doing business with this three four guys this guy has this much years this guy compound it that is the amount of delay that is now transferred to you partnership partnership this is what happens with partnership so you have to be careful whom you partner with because now what is on them is now transferred to you is it is it making sense now at the same time when a child of god recognizes this please you have to understand i was i was born um, in a syrian orthodox family 6 months into my birth my mother gave her life to jesus my father gave her life to jesus but lot of limitations were still on us lot of limitations yes one of the biggest of the bondages that was on on my parents only broke last year that is 36 years of of being believers it was last year um one of the one of the biggest uh limitation of a curse broke 19 years after they were became believers 19 years they didn't have the grace for properties the properties from my parents their grandparents didn't come to them the properties we were not financially blessed we were broke and my mother was a phenomenal giver she would just give to any pastor any prophet that came she would take milk money and give it to them okay that was my mother but somehow you know sometimes you, you there's a connection of a deliverer in world and god raised me up in the house as their deliverer i was 19 years old i had a trip god blessed me in that trip i came back and we bought our first property i distinctively remember all my life i only had one black shoes i still remember the day i said i will have a second shoe and i wanted to be a brown shoe See, you guys are not even excited about it because that's how normal it is to you but for me it was breaking a spirit of limitation are you following what i'm saying yes, yes. I, i can go story after story of every time i broke i broke i broke i broke i said this has never been done in my house it is done this has never been done it is done a few years ago i told my mother i will be the first millionaire in your house Okay. Is it the objective is not to brag but to tell you that there is a grace that you can be the one that breaks that generation yeah. limitation. Yeah. Until then it, it it was like it was impossible. I could not even dream about it. I could not even imagine about it. It was beyond my mental imagination. but the moment i started believing that this is my portion it began to manifest it began to manifest this can happen to you so sometimes you you are already a child of god 
But the question is, if you are a child of God, how much did you fight for your breakthrough? Do you know when your breakthrough is close, everything in you will fight the deliverer that is supposed to bring your breakthrough? You will have mind attacks against that deliverer. You will have the enemy trying to take you out of that ministry. You will have the enemy doing anything possible because he knows that now you're closer to your breakthrough. Because when the enemy knows that now you're part of a mission that is now you are escaping a generational curse, he has to now come attack all out because he's saying, whoa, 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 this guy, he's about to escape our hands. So we got to finish him now or it is never. So some of the attacks that came against you guys, it is a now or never attack. Some of the attacks? Yeah, because the enemy knows if I don't stop her now, I'm losing her forever. She's flying off. So think about it. So the woman leaves her house and comes under a man. Now it is this man's responsibility to now fight on behalf of his house. Are you following what I'm saying? Now it is the man's responsibility. The, the problem with our men in our churches is that we only think we have to take care of their financial needs. We only are worried about bringing food to the table. But whose responsibility is to protect your family spiritually? Who is responsible to break the generational curse of your house? Okay. Are you following what I'm saying? Who is going to do the research of, look, there's something wrong in my house. My father suffered with this. My grandfather had this. My great-grandfather, I'm seeing this in my own house. I'm seeing it in my life. So spiritually, when you know that you are under a generational curse and that which attacked your first house is now attacking your second house, do you think that changing your house will make demons leave you? Hey, you can change your boyfriend. But even the guy who was a nice guy will start behaving like your ex-boyfriend. Because there is a spirit that is around you now that looks at a deliverer, a potential fiancé huh? that can now be a blessing to you. Now the spirit begins to corrupt that potential helper, that soulmate, so that even the other person that is supposed to be a blessing is no more blessing. And then now you're thinking, what is wrong with my wife? But then the problem was not with your wife. It was a generational demon that all your generationally, the fathers in your house was depressed. The fathers in your house were sad. The fathers in the house committed suicide. So now that demon that is in your house has already targeted your wife. Because by generationally, you also have to end up bad you also have to give up in life you also has to be destroyed so then now you you think that it is your wife that is misbehaving wherein without you realizing she married into a curse now tell me whose responsibility it is to break this curse so you see you can, you can try to terminate the problem, but the real problem was a curse in your blood. You never dealt with. So wherever you go, the same trouble follows you. So what, what does this, this woman have to do when she leaves her father's house and has a curse on her father's house and she now marries you who is the priest of the house. What is your role? Are you going to sit and say, ah, your, your generational curse? Yeah, but 
her generational curse why did that flourish under you why did her generational curse survive under your grace that means you didn't know better to submit to a greater grace huh you didn't know how to short circuit <laughs> this demonic spirit that has been having free reign in your house free reign it like a ping pong ball it slapped everyone in your house you didn't know how to destroy it you didn't know how to bring it under a greater light you didn't know how to bring it under a greater grace the way to cancel a curse there's a way to cancel a curse it's not by breaking curse Imagine the number of curses that is on us from Adam. I break this one. I break that one. I, I break the curse of grey hair. Then I... <laughs> and the, the pimple causing curse. The, the wrinkle causing curse. Yeah, by the time you, you try to break all the curses. Huh? I, uh, you, you will be so exhausted. Because the list keeps going. By the time you finish one day... angel will bring you the next list the way to break a curse is not worry about the existing curse but to get under a greater blessing the manner to break a curse is you you locating what feeds my curse what feeds my curse what is causing this weakness to multiply what is empowering this demons in my house huh what is what Power. yes you locate that you locate that and you come under a certain blessing you come under a certain blessing a blessing that is superior a greater blessing finding yourself under a, a, a blessing that nullifies every weak words yeah. inferior words that has been spoken against you your father your great grandfather your great grandmother whatever marose kentene you locate yourself under a greater blessing already already now you start being absorbed by that blessing that's that's why i say when the enemy knows that a deliverer is around you now he has to make sure to disconnect you from that Eesh. i have seen certain mothers mistreating their children because this child is going to grow up and become the deliverer of the house so now the enemy is going to use the mother the mother's frustration the mother's anger to cause trauma in this little kid so that when this kid grows up it can be anything but a deliverer because now this kid is deformed this kid doesn't believe himself the kid is scared the kid has anxiety the kid is afraid of everything the kid doubts everything all the trauma of the mother was transferred to this kid now this kid cannot shine so some of you you're wondering why you went through so much of trauma as you are growing up because you were a deliverer For those who didn't get that let me rephrase that is because you are a deliverer So child of God don't short circuit your life don't run away don't be a victim of life position yourself under a greater blessing Marozek That is why have you ever wondered why 
the angel of the lord appeared to hagar who was running away huh and he says hagar where are you coming from <laughs> and whither to are you going hagar where, where are you coming from where are you going i love that question because he's saying i, I don't understand give me help me understand what is your vision what is your mission what is your purpose what is the reason for your existence and this drama that you're doing i need understanding prophet you I think have, it, okay, go, go I have it here genesis okay. chapter 16 uh uh-huh. verse 7 and the angel of the lord found her hmm. by a fountain of water hmm. in the wilderness by the fountain the way to shur and he said to hagar sarah's maid whence camest thou <laughs> and whither will thou go hmm. and she said i flee from the face of my mistress sarai hmm. and the angel of the lord said unto her return to thy mistress and submit thyself do under you know, her hand do you know why hagar hagar was running away from huh she was abused by her mistress she was maltreated so the lord is saying you don't run away from all these this is the setup for your blessing yeah. don't in other words he, he, please let me let me clarify i'm not saying don't run away from abuse cuz i know of some wives that have been abused to death so please i'm not talking about that what i'm talking about don't leave your place because somebody made fun of you Don't leave the place because somebody was jealous of you. Huh? Don't quit the location of your blessing because somebody was mean to you. Somebody didn't love you. Somebody didn't care for you and you're already ready to give up. Angel is coming and saying, "What are you doing? This is not the way you exit. The way you exit is you are sent out." He said return to you. Yeah, return and do what? And submit thyself. <laughs> Everybody can return. Very few people can submit. Because your blessing is connected to somebody who is blessed. And Hagar is is about to recognize that. He's saying, "No, no, no. Angel is saying the reason why we are having a conversation right now with you is simply because you are from some uh, house that is recognized in heaven." Hello, welcome back. We are so glad for such a powerful word. You know, the Bible says that all things will fade away, but his word will always remain forever. When you have the word in your heart then you will have something to stand through every fire or flood that comes your way. So I'm praying that you will come back with a mighty testimony. If you're blessed by this ministry, would you partner with us and help us to take this word to the nations? Please visit revivenations.org/give and connect with us on our different social media platforms and we would love to hear from you. Until next time, God bless you and shalom. Distance is not a barrier to God. RevivedNations.tv is now open to live participation to our services. 